The Postman Always Rings Twice by James M. Kane. Dramatized by Charlotte Gregg. They threw me off the hay truck about noon. I'd swung on the night before down at the border. And as soon as I got under the canvas, I went to sleep. When they pulled off the road to let the engine cool, they saw a foot sticking out and threw me off. They gave me a cigarette, though, and I hiked down the road to find something to eat. That was when I hit the Twin Oaks Tavern. I was Can I help you, my friend? Has a guy been buying a Cadillac? I'm meeting him here for lunch. Not today. You would like some coffee? Sure. Cora, one coffee out here, please. All right. What do you want to eat? If my friend doesn't show, uh, you'll have to trust me for this. He's buying me lunch. I'm kind of short myself. Okay. Ah, meet my wife, <laughs> my pretty white dove. One coffee. What else can I get you? Except for the shape, she wasn't any raving beauty. But she had a sulky look to her. And her lips stuck out in a way that made me want to mash them in for her. <clears throat> oh. Uh, eggs. Bacon. Over easy? Sunny side up. Enchilada? Enchilada. <sighs> Coming up. Uh, how old are you, my friend? Oh, um, 24. Hmm. I could use a young fellow right now. Uh, no, not here in the restaurant, in my automobile repair business next door. You understand automobiles? Uh, fix them up? Uh, I'm a born mechanic. <laughs> You want to work for me? Well, well, let me think about that. I, I've got a couple of other propositions. That guy I'm meeting for lunch. Rent free. All the enchiladas you can eat. Well, I mean, I guess if he doesn't show... What's your name? Frank. Frank Chambers. Nick Papadakis. Well, what do you say, Frank? It's a deal. <laughs> Cora, more coffee for Mr. Chambers. <laughs> Why don't you remember? I'm your pal. Your pal. Buddy, buddy, can you spare a dime? Oh. Oh, that enchilada was a peach, Mrs. Papadakis. Mm. Huh. <laughs> you people sure know how to make them. What do you mean, you people? Why, you and Nick. <laughs> you think I'm Mex? Nothing like it. Well, get this. I'm just as white as you are. Just because I got dark hair. You want to get along good around here? You remember that. Hey, you don't look Mex. My name was Smith before I was married. That don't sound much like a mex, does it? So how come you married this Greek? Is that any of your business? <laughs> hey, pass me that wrench, will you? Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> That's got it. Oh, good job. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking. Mm -hmm. You need a new sign here. The lights on the tavern part are busted. No one's going to stop for lunch at a sign that says Twin Oaks. We need to have the tavern part lit up. Okay, I, I, I put some new bulbs in when we're done here. Yeah, well, you're the boss. Well, what's the matter with that? Hmm. Nowadays, in the city... They got neon signs. They show up in the dark, they don't burn too much juice. Well, let's get the neon sign. I can see it now. 
Twin Oaks Tavern. Restaurant, barbecue, <laughs> sanitary restrooms, <laughs> and Papadakis proprietor. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it cost a bit, I'd say. <laughs> well, I know a place in LA. They do it for you. Cut price. You know, you could go over there today. Huh. You know, I think maybe I will. <laughs> yes, <laughs> by golly, I do it. <laughs> Los Angeles was only 20 miles away, but after lunch, he shined himself up like he was going to Paris. Soon as he was gone, I locked the front door, picked up a plate that a guy had left, and went into the kitchen. Oh, thanks. What's that noise? Somebody's trying to get in. I locked the door. Well, why'd you do that? I don't know. You better unlock it. Let's leave it. Nobody can get in if it's locked, and I gotta finish making these. <laughs> I took her in my arms, then and there, and mashed my mouth up against hers. Bite me, Frank. Bite me. So I did. I sunk my teeth into her lips so deep I could taste blood in my mouth. Then I carried her upstairs. Come here. Get off. He'll hear us. He doesn't suspect a thing. He noticed my lip. I told him the swing door had banged me in the mouth. He believed me. <laughs> yeah. He asked me to fix it. Why don't you get him to send us down to the market again tomorrow? Hmm? Or tell him we need something in town. I'm going up to bed, my little white dove. All right. I'll be there soon. Stop. I can't go on like this. Me either. I hate him. I hate the goddamn sight of him. Why did you marry him then? Pour me a drink, will you? There's whiskey under the counter. I'm gonna get drunk with you before I have to go up there with him. Here. When I was in high school, I won a beauty contest. Mm. <laughs> Free trip to Hollywood. Got a screen test. I was all right in the face, but when I began to talk up there on the screen, they knew me for what I was. And so did I. A cheap Des Moines trollop oh, that had as much no. chance in the pictures as a monkey. Oh, come on. And I found a job working in a hash house. Two years of guys pinching your leg and leaving nickel tips and asking, how about a little party tonight? I went on some of them parties, Frank. You know what I mean? I know. And then Nick came by and I took him. I meant to stick by him. But I just can't. Do I look like a little white dove? No. To me, you look more like a hellcat. Oh, that's one thing about you. I don't have to fool you all the time. You're clean, too. And your hair is light. You're big and tall and hard. You're not a short, soft, greasy guy that puts bay rum on his hair every night. Well, why don't you ditch him and blow? Hit the road with me. We could be a couple of tramps like we really are. Oh, that road doesn't lead anywhere but the hash house for me and a lousy parking lot job for you. Do you love me, Frank? Yes. Do you love me so much, nothing else matters? Sure. Well then, there's a way. Oh. Oh. You are a hellcat. I want to start again, that's all. I've made one mistake. And I've got to be a hellcat just once to fix it. They hang you for that. Well, not if you do it right. 
You're smart, Frank. He'll think of a way. So we made our plan. She was to go into the bathroom when he was in the tub and clip him from behind with a blackjack. Then she'd step out of the window onto the porch roof and come down the stepladder I'd put there. Then we'd break the bathroom door down, find him, and call the doctor. It would look like he'd slipped in the tub and knocked himself out. It was 10 o'clock at night. I put the ladder in place under the bathroom window and walked back to the car to wait. Oh, come on, come on. Hey! Hey, shoot! Shoot, get away from there, shoot! Shoot! Then a state cop came around the bend. He saw me standing there and drove in. Hey, uh, taking it easy? Uh, just came out to put the car away. That's your car? Belongs to the guy I work for. Okay, just checking up. <laughs> hey, will you look at that? Look at what? Goddamn cat going up that stepladder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love a cat. Always up to something. Well... Be seeing you. and call the doctor. I went into the bathroom. It was darker than hell in there. But in the moonlight, I could just see him laying in the water. His head wasn't under. I tried to lift him. He was slippery with soap and I had to stand in the tub before I could raise him at all. I dragged him into the bedroom and laid him on the bed. Then she came up with a candle. They're sending an ambulance. Did he see you do it? I don't know. What happened to the lights? How should I know? Oh, Frank. He better not come to. No, he has got to come to. If he dies, we're sunk. I tell you, there was a cop outside, and he saw the stepladder. A cop? If he dies, they'll know. If he dies, they've got us. Oh, why don't they hurry with that ambulance? As soon as the ambulance came, they put him on a stretcher and shoved him in. She rode with him. I followed in the car. When I got to the hospital, a state cop was lifting him out. When he saw me, he gave a start and stared at me. It was the same cop. He never said a word. He just stood there and looked at me. When they wheeled Nick out, his head was covered in bandages. We sat and waited. Then he opened his eyes. Nick, Nick, say something, please. We want to be fallen upon us. What? What was that? It was, was all go dark and... Then the nurse told us to go. So I took Cora down to the car and we started out for home. The cop followed us on his motorcycle. Then he pulled past and when we got back to the tavern, he was already there, waiting. And so the lights went out. That's right. You were hardly gone when it happened. Went off like a pistol shot. Hmm. I'm gonna take a look at that fuse box, buddy. Sure. I'll take a look at it, too. We went around the side, and he snapped on a flashlight. 
When he opened the box, there was the cat, laying on its back with all four feet in the air. Oh, ain't that a shame. She stepped off that ladder onto the fuse box and it killed her deader than hell. <sighs> Them poor dumb things, they can't get it through their heads about electricity, can they? <laughs> no, sir, it's too much for him. Well, I'll be going along. I guess that straightens us out. We didn't do anything about the cat, the fuse box, or anything else. We got into bed. She was trembling all over, and it was a couple of hours before I could get her quiet. We, we must have been crazy. Hmm. Just plain crazy. Just our dumb luck pulled us through. It, it was my fault. Mine too. No, I was the one that thought it up. You didn't want to. Next time, I'll listen to you. Except there won't be a next time. That's right. Never again. You're the only one ever meant anything to me. You're my baby. <laughs> now, should we go to sleep? It's the first time we ever slept together. Hmm. Kiss me good night. It's so sweet to be able to kiss you good night. <sighs> Next morning, the telephone waked us up. She answered it. And when she came back in the room, her eyes were shining. Frank, guess what? <clears throat> what? His skull's fractured. Is it bad? No, but they're keeping him there. They want him there for a week, maybe. We can sleep together again tonight. Come here. Not now. We've got to get up. We've got to open the place up. Come here before I sock you. <laughs> you nut. <laughs> uh. It was a happy week, all right. In the afternoons, she drove to the hospital but the rest of the time we were together. One day we cut for the beach. She had a yellow suit and a red cap, and when she put it on, I didn't know her at first. She looked like a little girl. It was the first time I ever really saw how young she was. We swam way out and let the swells rock us. She loved that. We lay there face to face and held hands under the water I looked up at the sky and thought about God Frank hmm? he's coming home tomorrow you know what that means I gotta sleep with him instead of you he would when he gets here, we're going to be gone. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Just you and me. And the road, Cora. You and me and the road. Just a couple of gypsies. But we'll be together. That's it. We'll be together. <laughs> Next morning, she put her things in a hat box, I put on a suit, and we started out. It was two miles to the bus stop, and we had to hike it. Every time a car went by, we would stand there with our hands stuck out like a cigar store Indian. But none of them stopped. Frank? How much longer to the bus stop? Not too far. Another mile, maybe? What's the matter? This is... What? The road. You're tired, that's all. Look, you wait here, I'll get somebody down the road to drive us into the city. That's what we ought to have done anyway. Then we'll be all right. No, it's not that. I'm not tired. I can't, that's all. Don't you want to be with me, Cora? You know I do. 
We can't go back now. We can't start up again like before. You know that. We have got to go. And then what? Then we get going. <laughs> no, we don't. We spend one night in a hotel, and then we start looking for a job. And living in a dump. And isn't that a dump? What we just left? It's different. I can't go on, Frank. Give me the hat box. <laughs> Would you listen to me a minute? Give it to me. I'm going back. She had looked nice when we started out, with a little blue suit and blue hat. But now she looked battered, and her shoes were dusty, and she couldn't even walk right from crying. Goodbye, Frank. All of a sudden, I found I was crying, too. I kept on walking and caught a ride to San Bernardino. It's a railroad town, and I was going to hop a freight east. But I didn't do it. I stayed there, playing pool with a bunch of suckers. I made some money, but then I lost it. So, I went back to Glendale and hung around the market, hoping I would bump into Cora. Hey! Hey, Frank! Hey, Frank, you old son of a gun! Nick. Hey. How you feeling? Oh, I, I feel fine. I couldn't feel better if I was right out of the car. <laughs> he had a bandage around his head, but he was all dressed up in a new suit, with his gold watch chain looped across his vest and a big fat cigar in his hand. But, but why did you run out on me? I, I'm sore as hell at you. Ah, oh, well, you know me, Nick. I stayed put a while, but then I got a ramble. You picked one hell of a time to ramble. I'll I tell you what, we're going to Santa Barbara tomorrow, and me and Cora. You come with us. You like the fiesta in Santa Barbara? Well, I hear it's good. Cora will be sore as hell at me if I tell her I saw you and didn't invite you. <laughs> come on, stay the night, and we all three can go in the morning. We'll have a hell of a time. Okay, if she's willing. That night, I heard them arguing upstairs. Then it went quiet. She came down to the kitchen and I snapped on the light. She stood there in a red kimono, as pale as milk, staring at me with a long, thin knife in her hand. Why did you have to come back? I had to, that's all. No, you didn't. I could have gone through with it. I was getting so I could forget you. And now you have to come back. God damn you. Go through with what? <laughs> he wants a child. He wants one right away. Well, why didn't you come with me? Come with you for what? To sleep in boxcars? You're no good. I know that. Why don't you just leave me be? Listen. Stall him on this kid stuff just a little while, and we'll see what we can figure out. I'm not much good, that's true, but I love you, Cora. I swear it. Oh. And now you're coming to Santa Barbara. You're going to stay at the same hotel with us. You're going right along in the car. You're... She stopped. And we stood there, looking at each other. The three of us in the car. We knew what that meant. Oh, my God. <sighs> Isn't there any other way out for us than that? Cora, it is in the cards. We've tried every other way out. I can't have no child with him. I can't, that's all. The only one I can have a child by is you. Oh, stall him. Just this one night. All right, Frank. All right. Just this one night. We got it all figured out. Nick and I would get drunk together, so she'd have to drive the car. Now, now it's done. <laughs> Brother, can, can you spare a dime? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Cora, where are we going? No, hold on, hold on, turn around. We're on the wrong road. No, we're not. I know where I am. 
It takes us to Malibu Beach. Uh, Don't you remember? I told you I wanted to see it. Uh, well, you go slow on these hills, my little white dove. Or we all get killed, eh, Frank? <laughs> the engine's overheating. You should let it cool off a bit, Cora. All right. Hey, we're near the canyon. Listen to this. Brother, can you spare a dime? You hear that? <laughs> it sounds like me. Just like you. Just the same old toot. <laughs> it's getting late, Nick. Okay, okay. Just one more. Brother, can you spare a dime? No. Come on, Frank. No. Oh. Oh. Listen, Frank. Listen to that. Start the car, Cora. Now! <laughs> she drove slowly up to the edge of the ravine. Below was a 50-foot drop. We got out, went round the back, and heaved. Then there we were, sprawled down on the road, and the car was rolling over and over down the gully. It's stuck. About halfway down. Now... We gotta look like we've been in an accident. Rip my clothes. Rip me. I shoved my hand in her blouse and jerked. She was wide open. From her throat to her belly. You got that climbing out. Go on. Do it. And this? You don't know how you got it. <laughs> she was lying at my feet. Her eyes shining. My tongue was all swelled up in my mouth, and blood was pounding in it. Yes. Yes, Frank. Yes! <sighs> Next thing I knew, I was down there with her. Hell could have opened up for me then, and it wouldn't have made any difference. I had to have her. Even if I hung for it. What now? It's a tough road ahead. You sure you can go through with it? With you? I can go through anything. They'll come at you. Those cops. They'll try to break you down. Are you ready for them? I think so. I'm drunk. I'll say stuff that's cockeyed. That's to cross them up. So that when I'm sober and I tell it my way, they'll believe me. I'll remember. And you're pretty sore at me for being drunk. For being the cause of it all. Yes, I know. Then we're set. There's just one thing. We've got to be in love. If we love each other, then nothing matters. Well, do we? I love you, Frank. I love you too, Cora. There's a car coming. Get up there on the road now. Just ask for help. Remember, you don't know he's dead yet. I know. You fell down after you climbed out. That's how you got the sand on your clothes. Yes. Yes. Go. She started up to the road, and I climbed down to the car. I had to be inside. My weight no sooner went on the floor than it sank, and I felt the car turning over on me. That was the last thing I knew for a while. My, my. You're a sight. How do you feel, Chambers? Okay. Kind of shook up a little, but I'll be all right. Uh, who are you? Sackett. <sighs> District Attorney. Now, uh, you don't have to talk to me if you don't want to, but I can tell you that a, a frank talk now saves a lot of breath afterwards. Sure. 
What do you want to know? Well, uh, you know, when did you go to work for Papadakis? Uh, last winter. Mm-hmm. How long did you stay with him? About, uh, about six months. And what did you do before that? Uh, knocked around. Hitchhiked, rode freights, bummed your meals wherever you could. Yes, sir. You ever been in jail? You knock around, you get in trouble with cops now and then. Yeah, according to these uh, papers here, you've been in jail in uh, Tucson, trespassing on railroad property, in Salt Lake City, San Diego, Wichita. Yes, sir, all those places. Oakland. Yeah, I got three months there. I got in a fight with a railroad detective. You beat him up pretty bad. I was beat up pretty bad myself. <laughs> Does it strike you as funny that after knocking around all these years and never doing any work, or even trying to do any as far as I can see, you suddenly settled down and held a job steady. Well, I didn't like it much. I'll own up to that. So after six months, you quit. And the day after you come back, Papadakis gets killed. Well, I feel pretty bad about it. And I helped him get drunk that afternoon. When we got in the car, I was... <laughs> I was thinko. I don't know what happened. Come out with it, Chambers. You and that woman murdered this Greek. And the sooner you own up to it, the better it'll be for you. Well, why don't you say something? <laughs> I don't know what to say, sir. I'm... You got me all mixed up. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll take it one thing at a time so you won't be mixed up. In the first place, you've been sleeping with that woman, haven't you? No, nothing like it. Oh, yeah? How about the week Papadakis was in hospital? Come on. I've seen her. I never even thought of it. <laughs> How about all those trips you took to the market in Glendale? What did you do with her on the way back? <laughs> all right. Suppose we did. We didn't, but suppose we did. Let's go with that. Well, if it was all that easy, then what would we be knocking him off for? I'll tell you what you were knocking him off for. Papa Doc has paid $14,000 for that place out there, cash on the nail, and he had a $10,000 accident policy that he carried on his life. See, that's where you made your, your big mistake, Frank. These insurance companies have got money. They got detectives five times as good as any of the state can hire. And they are on your case now. I hope Christ may kill me, sir. I never heard of an insurance policy till just this minute. You've turned white as a sheet. Wouldn't you? You know what the jury's gonna hear? First, you were sleeping with her. Then you try to kill him, but you fail. Next, you make him take out an accident policy. You all go to Santa Barbara and you get him drunk. You take the Malibu Lake Road so oh. she can see Malibu Beach. Wasn't that the idea no. now? Oh, but you didn't get there. You stopped. And while you were stopped, you crowned the Greek with a wine bottle. A beautiful thing to crown a man with, Chambers. And nobody knew it better than you because that was what you crowned that railroad dick with over in Oakland. Nothing like that happened. Listen, Chambers, there were three people in that car. You and she and the Greek. Well, it's a sin that the Greek didn't do it, and if you didn't do it, that leaves her, doesn't it? Who the hell said anybody did it? Ah, now we're getting somewhere, Chambers, because maybe you didn't do it, and if you're telling the truth, you've got to sign a complaint against her. What do you mean, complaint? <sighs> if she killed the Greek, she tried to kill you too, didn't she? She knocks off her husband for the insurance, and she tries to knock you off too. It's obvious. you got to sign the complaint, kid. Oh. I might, if she did it, Mr. Sackett, but I don't know that she did it. I can prove it. This witness who was driving past, he says he saw the car rolling over and over down the gully, but when he came around the bend, the woman was up on the road waving to him for help. Maybe she jumped. If she jumped, it's funny she took her handbag with her, isn't it? Isn't it? She wasn't in the car when it went over. That proves it, doesn't it? I don't know. All right, listen, listen, listen. If you had nothing to do with this, you better sign this complaint. Because if you don't, then I'll know it was you. And so will the jury. I signed. There was so much sweat on my hand that the guy had to blot it off the paper. Sackett left, and the next thing a lawyer comes in. 
a little guy, about 40 years old, with a leathery face and a black mustache, name of Katz. Mm. He's got you in a spot, all right. Oh, I shouldn't have signed it. Cora didn't murder him, but he had me going, and now I don't know where the hell I'm at. Well, anyhow, you ought not to have signed it. Mr. Katz, hmm? will you do one thing for me? Will you see her and tell her that I... I'll see her, and I'll tell her what's good for her to know. For the rest of it, I'm handling this, and that means I'm handling it. You got that? Yes, sir. I got it. I'll see you in court. Next day, they put me on a stretcher and took me over to the courthouse. There was a big crowd there, and photographers were snapping flashlights at me. Cora was sitting down on the bench with Katz and Sackett. Her blue suit had been cleaned and pressed, and her shoes polished. Her eye was black, but not swelled. Cora Papadakis, you are charged with the murder of Nick Papadakis and with assault against Frank Chambers with intent to kill. You may make a statement if you wish. Cora didn't say anything. Then Sackett, the district attorney, started up, calling his witnesses. He called a guy that said he represented the Pacific States Accident Assurance Corporation of America. And he told how the Greek had taken out a policy just five days before. $10,000 for the loss of two limbs, $10,000 for death by accident, $20,000 for death by accident on a railroad train. It's a very good policy. Thank you. I've got all the insurance I need. Mr. Katz, you may question the witness. Thank you. You are an interested party to this proceeding? In a sense, I I am, Mr. Katz, mm. yes. You wish to escape payment of this indemnity on the grounds that a crime has been committed. Is that correct? That is correct. You really believe that a crime has been committed, that this woman killed her husband to obtain this money and tried to kill this man, all as part of a plan to obtain it. <laughs> I've handled thousands of such cases, and I'll say I've never seen a clearer case in all my year's work. That's all, Your Honor. I intend to plead her guilty on both charges. What? It was as if a bomb had gone off in that courtroom. Next thing I knew, they picked me up on the stretcher and took me out, at the double, to a room across the hall. Then the door opened, and Cora came in. I see it all now. I see why I had to drive the car. <laughs> I fell for you because you were smart. And now I find out you're smart. Ain't that funny. Cora, I don't know what you're talking about. You and that lawyer. You fixed it up so it looked like I tried to kill you, too. So that it would look like you didn't have anything to do with it. No. Then you have me plead guilty in court. All right. I guess I'm pretty dumb, but I'm not that dumb. Mr. Chambers, Mrs. Papadopoulos. Get out of here, cats. You goddamn stool. You were handling it. I say you were. But now I know you for what you are. Mr. Chambers. Get out of here! Why, what's the matter, Chambers? I am handling it. I told you that. God help me if I ever get my hands on you. You ganged up on me, both of you. So I would get it, and he would go free. Well, he was in this as much as I was, and he's not going to get away with it. I'm going to tell it all. I'm going to tell it all right now. Fine. We'll take a statement. <clears throat> okay, Mrs. Papadakis, you may proceed. I first met Frank Chambers when he came to the Twin Oaks Tavern for lunch. A lunch he didn't pay for. Then, when my husband's back was turned, he began to make suggestions to me. He was violent, and I was afraid of him. But I kind of liked him as well. 
Lord alone knows why. I knew he was no good from the start. Anyway, we began an affair. She told it all, from the beginning. When she got to the end, she said she didn't know anything about the insurance. We hadn't done it for that at all, but just to get rid of him. Then the stretcher guys came and took me back to the hospital where I slept for 18 hours straight. When I woke up, my head hurt like hell, and I wanted to go back to sleep. But Katz was sitting by my bed, and he wouldn't let me. Oh, what time is it? It's noon, and it's all over. Swell. When do they hang her? They don't hang her. She's out. Free as a bird. What? I don't get it. She'll be over in a little while, as soon as they fix some things up in court. Chambers, this is the greatest case I've ever had in my life. That was the perfect murder you just did. You, you just don't know how good it was. All that stuff Sackett tried to scare you with, about her having her handbag with her, it didn't amount to a goddamn thing. That don't prove any crime, that just proves she's a woman. What are you talking about? I had dinner with Sackett last night. He'd sell his soul to the devil to put one over on me, and I'd do the same for him. We even put a bet on this case. A hundred dollars. You had a perfect hand. But all the prosecutor's got to do is get one of you working against the other. He doesn't even have to work the case up. He's got an insurance company to do that for him. So he takes this stuff the insurance company dug up for him and scares the hell out of you with it and gets you to sign a complaint against her. Oh, I turned yellow, that's all. Well, yellows have color your figure on in murder. Now, let me tell you how I played my hand. After I left you yesterday, I checked up on Papadakis' safe deposit box, and I found what I expected. And there were some other policies in that box, and I went to see the agent that wrote them, and this is what I found. Papadakis had an automobile insurance policy, and the agent went out to see him the week before his accident to update it. At the same time, the agent sold him another policy, a personal accident policy. Papadakis signed up for the whole works. Mrs. Papadakis wasn't even there. Okay, so she didn't have nothing to do with it. That's right. Then I find out that one of the policies covers injuries to his employees. Uh, you were badly injured in that accident, and his wife was driving, right? Right. You could sue her for those injuries, and if you did, it would cost the company thousands. If the insurance company insists it was murder, they're going to have to pay you a fortune. Twenty thousand dollars. Twice as much as they'd pay out for the life insurance policy. Because she injured you in the course of doing the murder. Get it? Uh, kinda. Okay. So I took this piece of news to those insurance guys, and uh, when I laid it in front of them, they did business awful quick. So what do you mean? Uh, the insurance company said they didn't believe she was guilty, so the jury didn't believe it either. There wasn't a chance in the world of convicting her after that. You mean it's the insurance companies who decide whether people are guilty? Sure. This is California, son. Anyway, I got up and told the court how my client had protested her innocence from the beginning, and in the light of the testimony just given by the insurance guy, there was no course open to me but to withdraw the plea of guilty. Sackett knew he was sunk. He consented to a plea for manslaughter, gave her six months suspended sentence, and practically apologized even for that. So, does that mean we got off? <laughs> Both of us? That's exactly what it means. <laughs> Here you are, Chambers. <laughs> Just uh, sign that, will you? It's a waiver of damages for any injuries sustained by you. <laughs> oh, that'll be her now. Come in. Ah, Mrs. Papadakis. Mr. Katz? Well, you're both free to go. Oh, there's just... One other little thing, that $10,000 you get for knocking off the Greek. Normally, I'd take it for myself, but this time, you can have it. <laughs> what do I care about ten grand? i have got ten grand. This is what I want. It's a check from Sackett for a hundred dollars. I'm going to frame it. It'll go up on the wall, right over my desk. <laughs> we took a cab to the bank and deposited the ten thousand dollars. 
Then we went to a flower shop and bought two big bunches of flowers and went to the Greek's funeral. I got to blubbering while they were letting him down. At the end, they sang a song I'd heard him sing a hundred times, and that finished me. It was all I could do to lay our flowers out the way they were supposed to go. Then we went and rented a car and drove home. You turned on me. I had to sign the paper. I didn't turn on you, I just turned yellow. That's all. And you turned on me too, don't forget that. Well, that's the awful part. We both turned on each other. Well, that makes us even, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess so. We're just two punks. We had all that love and we just cracked up under it. God is up there laughing at us. Oh, the hell he is. We're laughing at him too, aren't we? We got away clean and we got $10,000 for doing the job. We've got something to celebrate. Here. Uh, my, but that's strong. You bet it is. You got too many clothes on. Rip me, Frank. Rip me like you did that night. I ripped all her clothes off. She twisted and turned, then she closed her eyes and lay back. After that, it was always the same way. We'd fight, and I'd reach for the bottle. But the business is doing good, Frank. I want to fix this place up real nice. Now have some tables out under the trees. A striped awning. Lanterns at night. I don't want any lanterns. All I want is to sell this place as soon as we can. Here, have a drink. I don't want a drink. Don't you ever want to be somebody? I don't want to see the ghost of that goddamn Greek jumping out of me and hear his echo in my dreams. I've got to get out of here or I'll go nuts. Oh, it's not that. You're just a bum. That's why you want to hit the road. We've got it good here. Okay, 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 so we stay. Have a drink, goddammit. I said I don't want a drink. Oh, sure you want a drink. Sure you do, baby. We got to have some more laughs about getting the money, haven't we? Haven't we? Yeah! <laughs> I know what you've been doing. You've been lying there trying to think of a way to kill me. Nothing like it. Don't lie to me. All right, then. I was. I knew it. Then we're even. <laughs> right back where we started. We're chained to each other. We thought we were on top of a mountain, but it is on top of us. And that's where it's been ever since we killed me. So you hate me? No. I love you. But love when you get fear in it. It's not love anymore. I got something to tell you. Since we're telling the truth for once. I'm going to have a baby. What? It's true. <laughs> the hell you say? <laughs> the hell you say? <gasps> Come here and give me a kiss. No, I gotta explain. We took a life, didn't we? So now, we could give one back. Oh, that's right. By having the baby? <sighs> Or there's another way. You could kill me. What? We could go swimming. We'll go way out. The way we did last time. 
And if you don't want me to come back, you don't have to let me. Well, nobody will ever know. It'll just be one of those things that happen at the beach. Tomorrow morning we'll go. Tomorrow morning, what we do is get married. We can get married if you want. But before we come back, we go swimming. To hell with swimming. Come on with that kiss. Tomorrow night, if I come back, there'll be kisses. Lovely ones. Not drunken kisses. Kisses with dreams in them. Kisses that come from life, not death. We got married at the city hall. Then we went to the beach. She looked so pretty, I just wanted to play in the sand with her. But she had this little smile on her face. And after a while, she went down to the surf. She went ahead, and I swam after her. She kept on going and went a lot further out than she had before. Then she stopped, and I caught up with her. She took hold of my hand, and we looked at each other. She knew then that the devil was gone, that I loved her. Pretty soon, my belly is going to get big. It's life. I can feel it in me. It's a new life for us both. We started back, and on the way, I swam down, deep. I didn't want to come up. I looked at the green water, and with my ears ringing and all that weight on my back and chest, it seemed to me that all the devilment and meanness and no account stuff in my life had been pressed out and washed off. And I was all ready to start out with her again. Clean. And do like she said. Have a new life. When I came up, she was coughing. Did you, did you swallow water? No. I... I feel funny inside. Here. Hold on to me. Oh, oh, maybe I strained myself. I, I've heard of women that had a miscarriage from straining themselves. Don't try to swim. Take it easy. Lie back. And I'll tow you in. She lay there. And I towed her by the shoulder strap of her bathing suit. Then I took her in my arms and rushed her through the surf. I ran with her up to the place where our sweaters were, then wrapped both of them around her and carried her up to the car. Come on! Out of my way! Out of my way, damn you! It's okay. Don't go so fast. I'm feeling better. I gotta get you to that hospital. For God's sakes! Slow down. Slow down. Frank! Look out! Cora, are you okay? Cora! Cora! Don't wake up, please! Please! Cora! <laughs> Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> no. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> Those kisses never reached her. Wake up! <laughs> Cats did his best for me, but they got me for it. He was licked from the start. Sackett said I'd murdered her to get the money. The jury was out in five minutes. So, I'm in the death house now. There won't be any stay of execution. I know that. That's why I gotta hope there's another life after this one. Father O'Connell says there is. 
I think about being with Cora, with the sky above us and the water around us, talking about how happy we're going to be and how it's going to last forever. That's when it seems real. When I'm thinking about her, I believe it. When I start to figure, it all goes bluey. Here they come. Father O'Connell says prayers help. If anybody's listening out there, send one up for me and Cora. And make it that we're together. Wherever it is.